So President Obama announced uh, over the weekend that he would be delaying executive action uh, to basically protect um, uh, undocumented workers uh, getting deported uh, and, 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 and give a reprieve through executive order and bypassing Congress. Um, President Obama pretty bluntly said uh, over the weekend when he announced this on an interview with ABC's This Week that a reason that he is, is delaying that action is because uh, until after the midterms, uh, and that's pretty self-explanatory that obviously a political calculation is in place here, uh, but he acknowledged that in his view the politics of the situation had changed uh, with um, – the the, uh, the the crisis of children uh, refugees uh, at the border over the summer uh, rep uh, uh, congressman Luis Gutierrez uh, has definitely said that you know President Obama is playing it safe uh, Gutierrez is a longtime advocate of immigration reform and the rights of those uh, seeking some type of justice and normalcy in the immigration system including obviously the millions of undocumented workers um, and he's saying they're gonna need to go back to the drawing board again uh, with President Obama, even after he expressed all of this frustration. But the reality is, is that uh, in the midterms, uh, there are a number of seats uh, and, and Democrats defending seats in red states uh, where you need Latino voters, uh, Hispanic voters to come out and vote. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the calculation is that there's not enough of them and that's not essential enough, uh, essentially, uh, to overcome the backlash of these executive orders. Now, again, politically, this is incredibly short term because the reality is, obviously, is that Hispanics are a profoundly essential part of any type of durable democratic coalition. Uh, so from the even political calculus, you're making a, a, an electoral calculation in one cycle that is going to poison the well uh, to a degree, and it's a mistake in that. And, and also just looks timid and weak because clearly Obama said vigorously and intensely he would do this over the summer. He's not even saying he's not going to do it, that he's made a policy shift. He's just pretty bluntly saying that he's just going to wait. Uh, so it doesn't look good politically. Policy-wise, obviously, it's a disaster because it's going to continue uh, this crisis of deportations. Uh, and, and then, you know, I think the most essential point is Obama saying that the crisis with children uh, at the border, the refugee crisis, was essential in his, recal uh, his recalibration on this. That is disgusting. President Obama should have been at the border from day one, as we've said many times on this show, not to talk about how he's going to solve a phony crisis, but to say, listen, to all of you idiots spinning conspiracy theories about everything from infectious diseases to terrorism, these are 10-year-old children flood, fleeing conflict zones in places like Honduras that rival Iraq in terms of their danger, kids who are getting forced into gangs, kids that are getting murdered and raped. And there had been bipartisan consensus as early, as close as 2008, George W. Bush signed a bill basically opening the path for asylum for these children. And the fact that the right has turned it into this phony crisis and Leading Democrats, such as President Obama, have gone along with it, show, again, the fundamental political moral failures of this era and of the leadership. Now, President Obama did something with the Dream Kids. That was great. Uh, and he's made the right noises. But the reality is, is that this is another one of those choices. The historical, moral, political policy task <clears throat> is to address this crisis. He flinched from that. That might help in one Senate race. And maybe the calculation is that. But especially after how vigorous he was in the summer, it looks weak. And, you know, and he should have doubled down. He should have said that in the summer and he should have gone to the border. and He said this isn't about immigration. This is about a human rights crisis that America, with its enormous capacity and enormous ability and enormous resource, could easily help. I don't want an eight-year-old kid sent back to Honduras to have their th neck slit by a gang. I don't want that. Do you want that? You talking all your Christian values? You want to send kids back to their deaths and their rapes? That's on you. That's not how I want to lead. That's not the values I represent. If he threw down that marker, this emerging group, Hispanic, Latino voters, 
who are going to be the bedrock of any type of progressive or democratic governance, and already have been, even as they have not been delivered for nearly enough, and any moral, right-thinking person would respond and be aligned with that call to action. But instead, Fox News and all the usual BS from the right, from the border states, obscured it. And it became this vague, amorphous thing of like, well, why are all these kids at the border? And what? Da, da, da? They're at the border because 10-year-olds are literally walking hundreds of miles to save their lives. Literally. Parents leave. I, had a, I, I was out having drinks with a friend uh, the other day. Her father uh, actually runs a factory in Honduras. And she depicted it as a pretty nice working situation. There's health care. There's on-site uh, banking uh, services so people don't get robbed and have their checks stolen from them when they leave. She said parents were leaving stable jobs to escort their kids to the Honduran border so they could begin the journey to the United States so that they could avoid getting forced into a street gang or a cartel. And you want to send kids back to that? And you want to turn this into some phony Fox News thing? Obama should have called it out for the moral calumny that it was from day one. We could solve this. This is a child refugee crisis. We can do something about it. And we can do something about this entire broken system. And that's it. I mean, it's just unbelievable. You're talking about kids. You're t you read stories. You're talking about girls getting raped and then killed with their panties stuffed in their mouths. And the policies that we pursue in that region through our drug war and through propping up different violent groups in the past and different dictatorships set the entire context for this. And then kids are running to, to, to get away. And then we plead poverty. It's disgusting. And then we ascribe to them that they're dangers to national security and the border and all this nonsense. It's disgusting. And then it reverts. It delays needed policy reforms that need to happen immediately. It's just disgusting. Uh, if you want to join us and explain to me while I'm, why I'm right. No, I'm just kidding. 646-257-3920 is the number. I mean, I don't know, man. I, 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 like, I, I just think with the fact that you would even say that what happened with children at the border over this summer, uh, yeah, you know, it did. It did change the politics of it. And the fact that it changed the politics of it to a, 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 a moving back from reform, it's just, un I mean, it really is unbelievable. 